First, we'll start off with what is the mole? Well, a mole is a unit just like anything else. So, um, just like a dozen is 12, a mole is a constant. So, the mole happens to be very large, much larger than a dozen. A mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay? That's huge. That's, that's a ridiculously large number. If you, uh, if you can understand that, how big that number is, it's just, it, it's ridiculously huge. That number is actually Avogadro's number, and it was calculated specifically to be used as a mole. Okay, so this is not a random, uh, I mean, this is sort of a random number, but they've calculated it. So it didn't coincidentally work out to be this way. Uh, this is specifically uh, made to do everything that I just, uh, that I'm about to tell you. Okay, so uh, what is, uh, we know a mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, but 10 to the 23rd what? Well, it's, I'll just refer to this number as Avogadro's number, because it's short to say. So Avogadro's number, a mole refers to Avogadro's number of representative particles. So you can have molecules, atoms, or ionic compounds. So for molecules, these are going to be uh, molecular compounds, these are going to be molecules. Ionic compounds, these are going to be formula units. And uh, atoms, these are just going to be atoms, okay? So the problem is, in order to understand how to do the math that I'm about to do, you need to know something called dimensional analysis. Good news. It's really easy. So, say I had something like 55 miles per hour and I wanted to convert it to feet per second, okay? Dimensional analysis is a really easy way to do this. So, what can you do with dimensional analysis? Well, what you do is you write a fraction. So, 55 miles per hour, so you would write that as 55 miles divided by one hour, because miles per hour is going to be miles divided by one hour, okay? 55 miles in one hour, you get it. So then you would multiply to get convert from miles to feet. You would multiply 55 miles over one hour. You would multiply by that, that by 5,280 feet divided by one mile because there's 5,280 feet in a mile. And the reason you have it that way is because if you're uh, good at math, you'll notice that the miles will cancel out and you'll be left with then feet per hour. Okay? So you can cancel out the miles right now. Or you can do that at the end, whatever you prefer. Okay? Then you, wanna, you need to convert from hours to seconds because now you're at feet, but you want feet per second. Okay, so you would multiply by one hour over 60 minutes, okay? And why the hour at the top and the minutes at the bottom? Well, because when the hour's at the top and the minutes at the bottom, the hour will cancel out with the hour we had earlier, and now we have feet per minute, okay? Then you do the same thing, one minute over 60 seconds, the minutes are going to cancel out, and then you're going to get 55 times 5,280 feet divided by 60 times 60 seconds, okay? So then you notice the two units we have are feet per second, and then that works out to be 290,400 divided by 3,600, uh, 3, which works out to be 80 and two-thirds feet per second. That's pretty fast. Okay, so if you're going 55 miles per hour on a uh, speed on a highway, you'd be going 80 and two-thirds feet every second. Okay, so that's how dimensional analysis works. It uses fractions to cancel units and then when you're canceling those units, if you will, you'll eventually get the final unit, and then um, from there you can just multiply the fraction, and you'll be set. Okay, so now we have to apply this concept to moles, okay? So I'll say it right now. Basic moles are easy, okay? Say I gave you something where there was 1.2044 times 10 to the 24th representative particles. It doesn't matter what they are, okay? And you need to calculate how many moles. Well, this is straightforward. You really don't need dimensional analysis for this. But it's good to practice. So you would multiply this by 1 mole over 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles, OK? You notice this way the particles and the particles cancel out, and you're left with moles, OK? Then you have 1.2044 times 10 to the 24th over Avogadro's number. That's 2 moles, OK? So in reverse, flip-flop, but you have 5.5 Actually, don't flip-flop it. Another example, okay? 5.5 times 10 to the 28th formula units of potassium iodide, okay? You would multiply this by one mole over Avogadro's number of formula units, okay? And you're going to get 9.13 times 10 to, the, 10 to the 5th moles of potassium iodide. That's a big number, but remember, we had 10 to the 28th up top and only 10 to the 23rd on the bottom. Okay, 
8 third 5, okay? And because 5.5 5, um, cancels out with the 6, works out, okay? So I hope you can see how that works. So you really don't need to use dimensional analysis because if you're smart, you will have picked up that when you I give you particles and you want to find moles, you just divide by Avogadro's number and it's going to give you the number of moles. And when I give you moles and you want to know particles, you just multiply by Avogadro's number. Okay, same way you would do with a dozen. You know, I say three dozen bagels, you'd multiply by 12, 36 bagels. Okay, so let's give an example. If I, you can... Uh, you can make it a lot harder though by splitting up the formula units. So, okay? So if I just gave you oxygen uh, and I said three moles of oxygen, you could easily calculate by multiplying by Avogadro's number the number of particles. Or if I gave you uh, X number uh, particles of hydrogen, you could easily calculate the moles of hydrogen by dividing by Avogadro's number. But you can make it much more complicated when you give a formula unit and you have to split it up later. So say I give you three moles of water and I wondered, how many atoms are there, okay? So water is a molecular compound. That means there's multiple mo molecules in water, or multiple atoms in the molecule of water, okay? This is where it starts to get tricky. So first, we know we have three moles of water, okay? Put that over one just because it looks nice that way. So now we need to get how many particles there are in water, okay? So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, okay? because that's how many representative particles there are per mole. Th that always stays the same. That's that, that ratio of um, Avogadro's number over 1 or 1 over Avogadro's number never changes. Okay? So now we have 3 times Avogadro's number of representative particles or molecules of water. Okay? But now you need to know how many atoms are there. Well, we know how many molecules there are. It's three times Avogadro's number. That's how many molecules of water there are. But now you have to figure out how many atoms are there in one molecule of water. Well, H2O, that's three. So you multiply what I just said by three atoms in one molecule. The molecules cancel out. And you get 5.4198 times 10 to the 24th atoms in hydrogen. You could go further and figure out how many oxygen there were or sorry, not atoms of hydrogen, atoms in a water molecule. So that's hydrogen and oxygen. You could take that further by figuring out how many oxygen atoms there were or how many hydrogen atoms there were, which is fairly easy to figure out how many oxygen atoms there were. You know that since there's only one oxygen, H2O, there's only one oxygen for every water molecule, the amount of oxygen molecule uh, atoms is the same as the number of water molecules. And the number of hydrogen atoms is twice the number of water molecules. You add those together and you'll get the total number of atoms that I just said. So that's that's it. That's that's about as hard as it gets. You know, you could give be given like phosphoric acid, um, sulfuric acid, um, you know, where there's more, but that's as hard as that can get. So it's really pretty simple. It's just multiplying by a constant. Okay? So that's it. You just multiply by this Avogadro's number uh, over one Avogadro's number represented particles over one mole or flip-flop it and um, you're set. Okay. That's pretty easy. What gets hard, it can, you can uh, make it harder though by giving molar mass. Okay. So remember when I said earlier how the mole was exactly calculated to specifically be that. Okay. You're going to understand why based on this mass concept. Okay, so if you were to look on the periodic table, you would find the masses, the average mass, weighted average, the mass is a weight of av weighted, on the periodic table you see an atomic mass unit, okay? The mass is measured in atomic mass units. This is a weighted average of all the isotopes found uh, on this, of this element. So there's going to be heavier isotopes, lighter isotopes, and they are weighted by how common they are on Earth, okay? So that's what the atomic mass unit is. So carbon 12.01, hydrogen 1.01, oxygen 16.00. Just some examples, okay? A mole was calculated specifically to do this. In one mole, or Avogadro's number of particles of oxygen, for example, there's going to be exactly 16 grams of oxygen, okay? So they've calculated it such that in one mole of any element, there's going to be its atomic mass unit 
except not in atomic mass units, but in grams. So for carbon, in one mole of carbon, 12.01 grams, okay? So in one mole of anything, there's simply its atomic mass unit of grams. That's how the mole was calculated. It's, it's really simple, okay? They've made it really, really easy. So you can have this uh, another um, thing to multiply by when you do dimensional analysis, which is grams per mole, okay? And this is exactly what I just described. We can take, for example, nitrogen, 14.01 grams per mole of nitrogen. And if you look nitrogen on the periodic table, guess what? Its atomic mass unit is 14.01. Okay? That, that's very simple. But now, now that we know how much a mole of something, what the mass of that is, you can start converting between masses of things, moles of things, and representative particles of things, not to mention atoms of formula units or molecules. So you can be given the weight of uh, a molecule and you can be asked how many atoms of a specific part of that, of a specific element in that is. Okay, so as you can see, it becomes really important to use dimensional analysis because earlier on when you can easily do the math just, you know, by multiplying and dividing to, uh, at the later stages when you start need to multiply by like five, six constants, it becomes really hard to keep that straight without using dimensional analysis where everything is so nice and neat and cancels out perfectly. Okay, so we'll just give you an easy example. Okay, you have 3.5 moles of nickel. Okay, that's pretty easy, right? So you would multiply by um, nickel's constant. I, I'm sorry, I don't have it written in my notes. I don't know what it is. But whatever the atomic mass unit of nickel is, grams per one mole of nickel. Okay, so... 3.05 moles is kind of cancel out with the moles on the bottom, and you're going to be left with 3.05 times whatever nickel, nickel's atomic mass unit is, um, which is 179.0045 grams of nickel in 3.05 moles of nickel. Pretty simple, okay? Uh, another example, in 568 grams of iodide, there's going to be 4.5 moles. How do I calculate that? We have 568 over 1 grams times one mole over the atomic mass unit, but grams of iodine. I'm sorry, I don't have it written either. Okay, so then grams and grams cancel out, and you're left with moles, and um, the calculation would be 568 divided by the atomic mass unit of iodide. That would give you 4.48 moles of iodide. Okay, so you can start making it even harder, okay? So far, it's pretty easy. You have these two constants, you can convert between them, okay? Well, I'll give you another example before I uh, up the difficulty. 1.309 times 10 to the 25th particles of sulfur, okay? What's the mass of that? Well, start with dimensional analysis. 1.309 times 10 to the 25th particles of sulfur, so We'll go with atoms, okay, because it's an element. So we put that over one, representative particles. Now we need to convert to moles, so we go one mole over Avogadro's number, representative particles. Representative particles cancel out. And then we do 30, 32.07 grams per mole. The moles cancel out, okay, because 32.07 is the atomic mass unit of sulfur. So there's going to be 32.07 grams in one mole of sulfur. So now the representative particles will have cancel out, the moles will cancel out, and we're left with grams, which is what we want to find. So we're left with 1.309 times 10 to the 25th times 32.07 over 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd grams, okay? Which works out to be 697.104 grams. Okay, so that's how you can calculate uh, the grams um, of a specific number of particles. Uh, that way you can also calculate, you know, how many particles are in so many grams by reversing that process and using dimensional analysis. Okay, it's really key to use dimensional analysis because without it, it becomes very difficult to keep your work straight, like I said. So, before I was saying you can make it much more complicated, I'll give you one final example, okay? Water, H2O. So, if I give you 5.68 times 10 to the 24th hydrogen atoms what would the mass of the water be? So if there is 5.68 times 10 to the 21st fourth hydrogen atoms and they're in a water molecule, 
how much would that water, what would its mass be? Okay? So, first we need to figure out how much water there is. Well, that's really convenient because in every water molecule, there's two hydrogen atoms. So for every two hydrogen atoms, there's one water molecule. So we can simply divide that by two, and we get 2.84 times 10 to the 24th um, molecules of water. Okay? So now, now we've converted from atoms of hydrogen to molecules of water, and now we can start to do what we were doing before, which is multiply, get the moles. So we know we have 2.84 times 10 to the 24th molecules of water. We uh, multiply that by one mole over Avogadro's um, number of representative particles. Particle particles cancel out, and now we're left with 2.84 times 10 to the 24th over Avogadro's number of moles. Okay? So now what we need to do is we need to calculate this. How many grams per mole is water? Well, water is not on the periodic table. It's not an element. Well, it's really simple. Okay? We know the atomic mass unit of hydrogen is 1.01 .01 and oxygen is 16.00. Okay? So in water, how many oxygens are there? Just one, so just 16. And then how many hydrogens are there? Two. So 1.01 .01 times 2, which is 2.02. .02. So 2.02 .02 plus 16 is going to be 18.02. Okay, so that's going to be the um, grams per mole of water. So 18.02 grams per mole of water. Okay, why is that? That's because all you do when you're figuring out for a molecular compound or an ionic compound, you simply um, figure out how many of each particle there are. So in H2SO4, 1H, um, sorry, 2Hs, 1S, 4Os. Okay, you find the atomic mass unit um, on the periodic table. And you multiply um, how many, uh, so in our last example there was four O's, so you would multiply four by 16, because there's four O's, and the atomic mass unit of oxygen is 16, and you add all of those together, you can see it on the green screen right here, and you'll get your final answer. Okay, so in this case it was water, it was pretty easy, 18.02. So, then the moles will cancel out, and we're going to be left with grams, okay? And that's going to be 84.98 grams of water. So, to summarize uh, how this all works, when you're converting from um, representative particles, so a mole is Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Avogadro's number of anything. In chemistry and physics, you use it uh, with particles, okay? Atoms, molecules, formula units, okay? Atoms are for elements, uh, molecules are for molecular covalent compounds, and formula units are for ionic compounds. So, if you receive the number of moles and you would like to figure out the number of particles, you multiply by Avogadro's number. If you receive the number of particles and you would like to figure out the number of moles, you divide by Avogadro's number. That's pretty simple. Okay? Now, when you, uh, this works with mass as well, so when you want to uh, figure out the uh, grams per something, it is... Um, so say you're given the number of particles and you need to figure out how much that weighs. You first have to convert to moles by dividing by Avogadro's number. You figure out the grams per mole, which is simply the sum of all of the atomic mass units multiplied by how many there are. So if there's just H, just hydrogen, the sum of, well, there's nothing to sum up, and there's only one hydrogen, so 1.01 .01 grams per mole of hydrogen. But if it's... Um, H2SO4, two hydrogens, which is going to be 2.02, uh, um, plus sulfur, which is like 32 something, I don't remember, um, plus uh, four times tixine, is going to give your total grams per mole for sulfuric acid. Okay? So, that's how you do that. Uh, the moles will cancel out. Uh, make sure you use dimensional analysis. Very key because it keeps your thoughts straight. Okay? So, when, um, so that's really it, okay, um, for that. But you've got to remember, you can be given all of these problems, uh, and you can still get things where they're going to ask you for specific particles, for atoms inside molecules, or they're going to give you atoms and you're going to have to give molecules. Um, you just have to multiply by the number uh, of atoms in the molecule or molecules in the atom. So with our H2SO4, uh, if you're given the amount of oxygens, you have to divide by four because there's going to be four oxygens for every sulfuric acid molecule. Okay? Um, 
conversely, if you're given sulfuric acid molecules and you need to figure out how many atoms of water, you have to multiply by four, or atoms of oxygen, excuse me, being tongue-tied, you have to multiply by four because there's four atoms of oxygen in every single um, sulfuric acid molecule. So uh, that's it. Um, I know I talked a little fast, but uh, you can always rewind and watch the segments over again. Um, just remember those constants, um, one mole over uh, Avogadro's number of representative particles, Avogadro's number of representative particles over one mole, and um, atomic mass unit of grams over one mole. You remember those um, constants, or, or sorry, conversion factors, um, and you uh, use those in dimensional analysis, um, you should be good.